Hello, Jet Setters. I'm Jeb Brooks with Greenergrass.com. Right now, I'm in Guam. I need to make my way over to Seoul, South Korea. The best way I know to do that is with Korean in their business class. Let's see what business is like on Korean. I'm trying something new with this video. Stick around to the end to see some scenes from Seoul. After a quick check-in, I went through a TSA pre-check line and found myself in the disappointing Sagan Bisita lounge. There was seating, poor food choices, a dirty bathroom, and no views of the ramp. So I left and checked the action outside. If you like travel and aviation, be sure to click the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you can be among the first to know when I publish a new video. Boarding was a bit chaotic because Guam is a popular family destination, but the gate agents had everything in really good order considering that. They were collecting literally dozens of strollers before we got on the plane. This 232 configuration is acceptable in either of two situations. One, you're traveling with someone you like, or two, you're lucky enough to have an empty seat next to you. While I would have preferred to be in the first category, I was grateful to be in the second. Sitting in business class is always exciting, but getting what you expect from Korean requires a bit of research. Korean Air has a lot of different business class seats in their fleet. In this video, though, we'll rate the one I'm in, the so-called prestige sleeper seat. Now, the best way to find out which seat you'll be in is to pay particular attention to the seat selection tool in the booking process with Korean. There's no amenity kit provided on this flight, but passengers are presented with headphones and slippers. Despite the fact that this was arranged in a 232 configuration, the seat itself is quite comfortable and provides all you'd expect from a business class seat. That includes plugs and reading lights, of course. And it turns out that if you don't like your seat mate, that's not really a problem. Well, until you have to go to the bathroom, I guess. First class is offered on these regional Korean flights. The in-flight entertainment was okay. The system itself was clunky and difficult to use, but I found several options that looked appealing. Now, I did have a bit of content on my iPad I'd been looking forward to watching, so that's what I went for instead. In my top 11 tips for long-haul travel video, I recommended always traveling with your own entertainment. Now, I've had a string of great flights lately, so haven't needed it. But it was time to catch up, and that was no problem on this flight, thanks to a plug at each seat. Soon it was time for dinner, which began with a gin and tonic. The appetizer was okay. But the real highlight came from one of my favorite business class meals of all time, Korean Air's Bibimbap. And what could be better than dessert? A fully flat bed topped with a nap. Before I closed my eyes though, I looked out the window and was richly rewarded. If you like photos like this, be sure to check me out on Instagram. I slept for a solid three hours on this flight, which was a total of about five. I rate my international business and first class flights in an admittedly subjective way. I jokingly call it the Jeb score. And there are five factors. The lounge, the seat, the in-flight entertainment, the food, and the service. First, the lounge. It was pretty bad. I visited the United Club in Guam and it's quite nice. You can tell this airport is a Star Alliance stronghold. Two stars. Second, the seat. A 232 configuration in business class is an automatic negative, but it was well organized and comfortable. However, even on a medium haul flight, this seat is worth two stars. Now, the in flight entertainment. The choices were good, but the interface in this system is showing its age. Three stars on this one. Fourth, the food. I really like Korean Air's Bibibop. It's the definition of comfort food on a plane. 
four stars here. And finally, the service. The crew struggled with English, and in a way I understand. I was the only Westerner I saw on the flight, but Guam is a U.S. territory, so it would have been nice to have an easier means of communication with them. But they were certainly friendly and eager to help. I'm giving them four stars here for effort. So that leaves Korean Air with 15 out of 25 stars here. A far cry from their first class service to Atlanta, which earned a whopping 25 out of 25. Do you think they earned this score, especially relative to other Asian carriers? Leave a comment, and as always, between now and the next time, see you in the sky.